everyone, thank you for tuning in. I'm your instructor Joy. Let me first play a tune for you. This was an excerpt from Vivaldi Concerto. Um, Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for your continued support. Book your license with me. Supporting me here also by Patreon page. Sending me kind of questions, comments. Thank you very much. I really appreciate. So this video is an answer to uh, several sub subscribers. <laughs> I'm sorry it's taking always longer than I anticipated to get back to you and uh, give you an answer. Now, um, several bodies was wondering how one could know when to use long bows, when to use short bows. Do we have any kind of notations of how one decides such things? Very good question. Of course, when it comes to beautiful tone production, how long the bow distribution plays the important role along the bow weight and bow speed, as well as the bow placement with contact point. Now, let's focus on the length of the bow since that was a specific question. So, I'm going to give you five examples. Of course, there are many, many other examples too, but just generally speaking, there are five examples that you can extract from this excerpt, from this Vivaldi Concerto, that one could understand just general rules, knowing when to use long bows, when to use short bows. Rule number one, long notes get long bows. <laughs> that means short notes get short bows. Let's see, we have, this is fast pieces, and we're thinking, oh, this is all oh, very fast. But when you look at carefully, we have a quarter note, which is a one beat. Those one gets whole bow. So feel free to use whole bow. And then make, if you, a lot of violinists tend to use very little bow. Because we think fast piece has to be always played with a short bow. But it's not always the case. When you have a little more beat, one beat is quite long than compared to a quarter of a beat. So use whole bow. Then that means when you have only half beat or a quarter of beat, less bow. Yeah, that would be one way of knowing it. I probably you already know that one. Long notes, long beat, short notes, short beat, short beat. Second one. Important note gets a little more longer bows versus less important notes. Now that gets a little complicated. So here one needs to know a little more music theory or a little basic musical understanding. There's passage here. I feel it, you may hear just a lot of notes, but it is very important when we study music, especially with some buried with so many notes. It's very important for each musician, for each player to understand or bring in what is important, the musically important notes out and less important, a little less. Imagine yourself, you're watching a show with a great singers and million dancers in the back. We don't give each equal level of spotlight for everybody. So the important singer in the center gets the, the brightest light and the rest, the dancer, they're also important, but they get less light. Maybe the exception, but you know what I mean. So we're, we have to do the same thing. Because if you give all the same light, that might be just too much and sometimes it's a little hard to understand. Now back to our classical music, to our Vivaldi music. So here, when you look at here, it feels like I played eight notes, but I played group of four notes four times. Like this first group, second group, third group, fourth group, then group five. You see that the pattern? So what if I only play the important note, which is first note of each group, it goes like this. Now, now you hear where the music is going. And that means for us as a player, as a as a communicator with music, we have to bring those ones out by using a little more bow, giving a little emphasis, like this. More bow. Less, more, more, less, more, less, more, 
less that way. People hear and so on like that. And you will see what even though that the small bit small difference and but your playing will be much more brilliant and people understand you're playing much much better. Point three. Longer bow for forte. Shorter bow for piano. For simply to give more tone, we use more bows, such as here, which we call it echo effect. Vivali uses a lot, which is. Then we play this one again. So as though it happens from far away from next room or echoing in the mountain, things like that. Typical way of doing it. Just experiment a little. If you add bow weight as you play long bow, and then light bow and short bow, and then your sound will be very brilliant and very impressive. Then, and so somebody next to the door, or somebody from a voice from far away, uh, came from now. So these three are probably you already know this, and I admit these are kind of not too hard to find out. Now I'm going to give you two more things which is very important and easily overlooked and not paid enough attention to. One has to use short bows during shifting. When we shift left arm, in this case we're shifting up, which means we're bringing our left arm towards our body. Because our arm is connected to one spine, when we move our left arm fast towards us, our right hand wants to simulate that shows how we're made. <laughs> Remember, trying to do a one hand, a one thing, the other hand, different thing simultaneously, very, very difficult. We like to play games like that. This is the same, same idea why we are having a hard time playing long bows. You're wondering, why can't we not use long bows? So this is a passage that has. Here. When we use long bows during shifting, we're creating tension on the left hand because the left hand is busy to moving and then did not have calm time to slow down near the landing spot. By using slow and very light bow during shifting, not only you're helping the left hand to stay calm, but you have higher chance to get it there because you're, you're not wasting your energy. You're so helping left hand while securing the success, successful landing up. Now, last point, point five. String crossings are equally important. When you do string crossings, here we have long bows, and then we could do long bows too. But same reason, when you do actively right hand, when you do string change, we have to raise right elbow height. In this case, we have to raise it to go to lower string. When you, we're already quite active with the elbow height. On top of that, if you add a longer bow, two tasks in one arm can be quite overwhelming and can create tension. Therefore, we could lose control. It's not impossible. One should always practice to master all techniques. But we're talking about a wiser choice of the bow to increase the success of your playing. So here, then a little less bow. Then next we're going more. Horrible. Yeah, I hope you can try it yourself. These are some simple points that you can try and you can apply pretty much many, many different kinds of music. I wish you all happy practicing and hope to see you again. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.